Well, hello everyone. My name is Rick Pasek, the Fly Fish Fanatic, and welcome to my tying bench. Uh, just so you guys know, got my teeth removed, so I'm gonna slur some words. Sorry, um, gonna be uh, another week before I get my teeth. So uh, let's let's just stop screwing around and get on her. This is gonna be a really cool uh, little uh, older, well, older, but um, maybe not so much older, but uh, it's a really cool uh, salmon and steelhead pattern. Um, called Nick's Nightmare. It's my version of Nick's Nightmare, so it's not quite the same, but uh, pretty close. Alrighty, let's get her on. So, in the vice today, I have a uh, Partridge Absolute Predator in a size 4. Okay, um, this is a bit of a short shanked, um, excuse me, a short shanked hook, but uh, great little hooks. Uh, I'm just looking for my... Excuse me. I'm going to be ready by this point, but I wasn't. There it goes. I'm going to be using for the body, uh, for the back portion of the body, some uh, uni mylar. I want the gold sides out. Excuse me. Um, for the uh, uh, for the thorax area, I'm going to be using some. This is a. I'm not sure what the what the name of the color is, but it's a, an orange blend from Dark Water Dubbing. Uh, Stu Thompson's dark water dubbing. Uh, I'm going to be using a little bit of block schloppen uh, and I am going to be using a little bit of natural kind of get that orangey kind of hue to it uh, squirrel tail for the overwing and uh, that is it. Pretty simple fly. Um, really fun to tie actually. I really like tying this this style so and black nano silk in a 12 on. <clears throat> I quite enjoy tying these uh, larger flies sometimes when you've been tying a ton of little coronamids and shrimp and that kind of stuff. It gets a little, uh, you gotta start getting a little cross eyed. So, getting into these big ones. And I like using these big flies, bigger flies anyway. So, um, it's a really good steelhead pattern, this one. It has been for many years. So, <clears throat> piece of the tinsel, silver side up. I'm sorry, I better grab that better. I want to leave a bit of space at the front here. It doesn't really matter for this because it's so thin. But silver side up, come around the corner just a bit, not too too much, out there, and then come forward and leave yourself a good amount of room for the thorax section. Then I'm going to wrap my gold, and I always give it a little bit of a, of a squish there just to make sure that it's uh, nice and flat at the beginning. And then just take this part. Actually, I'm going to get my magnifier because I really like taking my time on this to make sure that I am getting overlap with this. This isn't the widest stuff, so we just want to make sure I get that nice overlap all the way along. Oh, that good old mylar squeak. You know you're nice, nice and tight when you got that mylar squeak going. So, tie that off. <clears throat> and keep it to the back. Actually, no, I don't want to use this one, sorry. Uh, I'm going to use the... Uh, <sighs> so either some wire or some some uh, oval tinsel. Um, not as prepared for this as I normally am. <laughs> Guess the old teeth are, or the lack of teeth. <laughs> kind of get into the brain. So I'm just going to tie in it. This is a, a, a medium, I think. Uh, yeah, medium copper. Just going to tie that in along the side back to where I stopped with the body. And put that away. I normally do it with either a copper um, wire or a the, the gold um, olive uh, oval tinsel. So now I'm going to take some of that awesome dark water dubbing. This stuff is great. If you guys haven't uh, 
haven't seen it before, um, de definitely go check out Stu Thompson's, uh, um, it's darkwater dubbing at wordpress.com or something like that. So it's a great stuff. It's so soft and it's got that uh, cool blend of flash in it and a couple of different materials. So it's really nice stuff. A little bit of wax. Dubs on nice. Really nice actually. Just I just love this stuff. The midnight uh, black, midnight black or the black I can't remember. I can't remember all the names of them. Um, it's a really cool one. It's kind of black and it's got red and a little bit of blue and it's the almost like the uh, like a patrol car, but this is the original patrol car. Uh, Stu's been making this for quite a few years. These colors, so I think since the late '80s or early '90s. So, so but like that, and I'm gonna go. Put more back on. I want it. I want this to be fairly thick of a thorax area. So I'm going to go back over top of it again. One more time to there, and put some more on. And this should do it. What I want. a little bit more especially at the front end here you want a little bit more because uh, you want for that it, it's going to help the hackle stand out sure this copper wire is in there you don't want that to undo helicopter off really make sure it's tied down okay now piece of block schlopping um, you can use a piece of uh, like um, a longer hen um, saddle if you want um, that's up to you um, I just like the effect of schlopping gives um, so, because I really like this, the, the I like the, the uh, shine on Shalopin, right? It's really, just take, take a look for one that's appropriate length. Once I find one, I'll explain there. That one should be good right there. And I'm only going to be using the tip of this one, because I don't want too, too long of fibers here. So about there. Gonna expose that stem just a little bit and tie it in on my side with the shiny side facing out. Let me make sure that's tight on nice and tight. Okay, <clears throat> get my oh, get my uh, hackle plier. Now you don't need to use a hackle plier if you get a long enough feather. This is probably long enough, but I don't want to have to grab for it in the middle of it if it does. So one, right behind that orange dubbing, two, right in front of that. That's actually one and a half, that's two and a half, that's three, that's it. I don't want to go any more than that, okay? I'm gonna stroke all that back including that little stub. And then you just go and find that little end. When you're done, that way you know it's tied down well, and you're just gonna give this one a wiggle, and it breaks right off. Just got a little bit of fray there. Stroke that all back, just make sure that's tied in nicely. I always like taking my brush and just giving it a bit of a brush out. And I like hitting 
that dubbing too with just a little bit. Battery died. Start over here. So I like I like taking my Velcro as well. Just making sure it's clean from that last. Just did a UV uh, minnow with it, but and I just like pulling down. I could I should have done this actually before I put the hackle on. I like pulling down that orange a bit, pulling it down like that. So okay, now make sure this is all stroked back nice. Now, I take a little bit of that squirrel, that natural squirrel. I got my little hair stacker here because I want the ends to be fairly even. And I'm going to look for one, that, an area that's got a nice orange tips. So there, that one's not too, area's not too bad right there. And I don't want a whole ton here, but um, I definitely want to have a, a wing, so you know, with this stuff it's so thin, but you know, probably like 20 or so little hairs. Once I got that cut off, I'm gonna put it into my stacker. Got this nice little, still little mini stone foe stacker. I want to be about to the back that where the gold stops, about like that. So about there. I'm just going to switch it to my other hand. Cut off all this material over my garbage bin. Wax my thread. Very important step right here is to wax that thread. Then I'm going to lay this right on the top. Loose couple of loose wraps. Oh, I'm going to keep spinning off on me. Hold on. I'm not holding right. Right against my finger there. Tighten down a bit. There we go. Tighten down a bit and come back onto it. Now I'm going to pull it back just ever so slight so I'm out of that eye. There we go. And now I'm going to really crank down on those. Now I want to just make sure I'm on the top and I don't want it to spread too too much but I definitely I do want it to spread out a little bit you see how that see if I can focus for you when it's on its side see how it's spread out a little bit that's what I do want I don't want it to be right tight in a, in a bundle okay so now I'm just gonna put a little whip finish in here I did get a little bit into that eye but I can take care of that right now just a little whip finish so I know I'm not losing anything. I'm just gonna get in there and clean out some of those some of those butt ends there. Could have pulled it back just a wee tad, but it's not a huge deal. There's tons of room for the tons of room for the fishing line. So I'm just gonna wax again just to make sure. And I'm gonna try to go and pull those down now. back to the front here and there we go that gets a nice back into the, the bundle okay right to the front whip finish five or six turn whip finish cut that off some of the squirrel that's okay that's okay it's still good yep that's still good it's actually probably even better it's a little thinner I like it a little sparser so that's probably even better so there now I'll take some of my uh, UV resin wherever I put it and I like using UV resin on these heads it just makes them stand out a bit better Come in with my little bodkin and clean up anything that's in that eye area. 
And if you get a little bit into the squirrel up front here, it's actually not a bad thing because it'll help hold it. That squirrel can be pretty slippery, so. And that is my version of Nick's Nightmare. Nick's Nightmare originally came with uh, uh, used uh, um, a purple hackle instead of the black, and uh, it used um, um, Arctic Fox for the overwing. Um, and I use it with Arctic Fox as well sometimes. But uh, yeah, so that's uh, my version of Nick's Nightmare. It's a cool little fly. Like I said, fun to tie. Um, and uh, really effective for, for steelhead, especially I found, especially in, in, in uh, clearer waters, it really works really well in the clearer waters. Uh, in, in dingier, darker, brackish, more brackish type waters, I like going a little brighter. But that little bit of uh, that orange in there, really it helps make this fly pop, but not too much to scare the fish away. So, alrighty. Well guys, hope you guys enjoyed that one. If you did, give her a thumbs up. Um, if you've uh, subscribed, thank you. If you have not, please consider doing so. And uh, in a month or so, um, I'm going to be doing a giveaway for... Uh, I'll switch over to the other camera because it's so hard to see on this one. This here, the Osprey Flybox um, book. It's a great book with uh, absolute tons of uh, information on all kinds of different uh, flies from still water to steelhead to salmon to... Uh, Cutthroat trout to lakes, to rivers, the whole bit. So um, I'll be doing a giveaway for that in a little while. So, all right. Hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, thumbs up, tie lines. Talk to you later.